Can we take our Bible this morning? As I'm greeting you all in the name of Jesus. Can we take our Bible in the, uh, 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 and turn it uh, into the book of Psalm 92? Psalm 92, that's where our message will come from. We want to talk about the topic that I titled, Planted in the House of God. This is the 10th anniversary of this ministry. And uh, throughout the week of prayer that we had, I told you I had two messages. That the Lord has given us for the, for the occasion of this celebration. The first one came from the book of First Peter chapter 5, which was actually a prayer that we're making before the Lord, that we made before the Lord, that we continue to make even before the Lord in favor of every one of us, that the Lord may grant us four things, restoration, establishment, strengthening, and settling down. Peter was praying, asking for four things, that the Lord may restore his people, that the Lord may establish them, may strengthen them, and may also settle them down. That's our prayer, we trust God, that is granted in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, this message is a kind of an appeal, a kind of a divine direction that the Lord is giving unto us as we want to talk about the planted in the house of God, and the purpose of the message is to show us uh, how important it is for somebody to be in the house of God. Amen. My assignment this morning uh, is to show you from this very passage that we're going to look at, uh, is to show you the importance uh, of uh, being planted in the house of God and the benefit or the significance, if you want, uh, or, 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 of the benefit that that brings. We will not extend it to other passages, uh, but we will draw more or some or two, one or two or three from this passage uh, that as a church, as a house that is celebrating uh, an anniversary, we may come to realize uh, why is it important for a child of God uh, to be planted in the house of God. Amen. Am I, am I clear right then? Yeah. So you know where we're heading to, just to make it simple, easy for you to, to follow through the message. I thought that was important just to put it across to you as we are going into the reading. I said Psalms 92 from verse 12 on to 15. It reads as follow: The righteous, the righteous, uh, the righteous, or let me just rather take it from 11 even. My eyes have seen the downfall of my enemies. My ears have heard the doom of the evil as a science. The, the righteous, the righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like the cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the court of our God. They still bear fruit in old age. They are ever full of sap and green to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and that there is no unrighteousness in him. Somebody say amen. amen. Verse 13, which is our key verse, he say, they are planted in the house of the Lord, they flourish in the court of our God. Once again, somebody say, Amen. Amen. As I say, this message is a kind of a divine direction that the Lord is giving unto us in the form of appeal. An appeal to every child of God out there. An appeal in the particular to every child of God member of this house to learn how to position yourself spiritually and be well seated in the house of God in order for you to see the glory of God. Amen. This is a call to commitment to the house of God. It is a call to a commitment to the house of God and to his word. It is made unto us in the form of appeal to make you understand that there are great blessings that the Lord pour upon the lives of those that are seated in the house of God. Am I talking to somebody right here? It matters that Christian we may understand. It matters because today we have people that enjoy sitting at home, switching channels from one channel to the other, from this to the other, 
They say they are attending church from a home. We are living in a time of technology, virtual church, virtual what and what, virtual pastors. You see, you have all these kind of things. But I want us to understand that there are great blessings that the Lord releases in the house upon the life of those that are planted in his house. Somebody say amen. amen. So my topic, as I say, as we close in this week of prayer, pray, I want to show you the importance of being planted in the house of God. Now, the text that we have before us, this psalm can be subdivided in four parts. It can be subdivided in four parts. The first part is talking about the duty and the advantages of, of praising God. That's from verse 1 to 3. And the second part talks about the grandeur of God's work. That's from verse 4 to 6. The third part talks about the fall of the wicked at 79. And it closes the section that you are going to consider from 10, verse 10 to 15. It talks about the divine providential care for the righteous. How does God providentially care for those that are called the righteous? That means the children of God. Am I talking to somebody right here? So our focus today, this morning, is in the last, last section. The last section of this psalm, which goes about showing us the blessing of the righteous man and how these blessings extend in his life until old age, how they continue to flourish, not only in their youth, but also in their older age. Am I talking to somebody right here? That's what we want to look at this morning. That's where our focus is. Uh, for, for, for God's sake, I mean for, for, for our own edification uh, this morning. Now, we hear that Islam is making this statement. He says that uh, the righteous are planted in the house of God and they flourish, uh, they flourish, uh, they flourish, uh, the righteous flourish like a palm tree and go grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Now, you see, this psalm are uh, using that uh, the, the illustration or the analogy of the palm tree to show us uh, to show us that, that uh, the righteous person uh, uh, how they are planted in the house and how they are flourishing. Am I talking to somebody right there? He's using that illustration. Now it might sound a bit old. Are you listening to me right there? Right. Lift up your hand and say glory to God. Glory to this God. morning I really want to talk to you. I want to talk to your heart. I want to really talk to you. It might sound a bit odd to hear of a palm tree being planted in the house of the Lord. Am I talking to somebody right here? It sounds a bit odd. How can you plant a palm tree in the house uh, 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 of the Lord? Well, those that live in that time, in those part, that part of the world, it is not something strange to them because they have the houses that were in the form of a, a quadrangle that uh, built in the form of square with a space, a court, uh, living in left uh, in between, right? Are uh, you getting what I'm saying there? That would allow them to plant trees. So in the time of the, the Islamists, uh, that was something that was uh, usual. So now he uses this analogy of the palm tree to pass on to the house uh, a certain message. A message which I want us to grasp once again, and I'm repeating myself uh, this uh, this morning. He uses an analogy of a tree because you know what? Uh, tree are symbolic of uh, enduring life and fertility. Are you getting what I'm saying right here? The illustration of a tree, it talks about, uh, because tree I use here is to talk about uh, a long life. Because normally, tree lives uh, very long. Are you getting what I'm saying right here? So it talks it use the illustration of uh, the palm tree to talk about uh, 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 the fertility, to talk about uh, long life. And he uses that uh, in the life of the righteous man. Then he say, the righteous men are like palm trees that are planted in the house of the Lord and that makes them uh, flourish uh, in the court uh, of the Lord. Am I talking to somebody right here? Now, one question, beloved, you may ask just yourself, why, why palm tree? Why palm tree and what does it mean to, that, that the righteous flourish like a palm tree? What does, what does it mean? No, first of all, let me just give you quickly, just a side, I mean, uh, just a side dish, uh, uh, just uh, an extra information if you want. 
In their time, those that live in that part of the world, they had four types of the palm tree. Are you getting what I'm saying there? They had four types of the, the palm tree. They had what they call the coconut palm tree, the date palm tree, the plantain palm tree, and the palm tree that the Bible is talking about here. Now, there is one thing specific, especially if you want uh, about this plant palm tree that the Bible is talking about right here. Number one, this palm tree that they are talking about uh, is a tree that will grow straight and tall. Are you getting what I'm saying right there? It does not go, grow in this way. It grows uh, straight and tall. And it can reach at a height of about uh, 20, 24 meters higher. You get what I'm saying right there? That's that how these three were, 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 were growing. And in their growth, they don't change their thickness. That means they go, they go, they grow straight. The same size that it has from the bottom, from the root level, it keeps it up and it goes straight upward. Am I talking to somebody right here? You see, now, this time of the palm tree, one thing specific also with them is that uh, they were very, very strong. Are you getting what I'm saying there? Not only they grow straight and tall, but they were also very strong, very much and deeply rooted. So much so that they can withstand any kind of weather. Are you with me right here? No matter the weather, this kind of tree will stand strong. It stand very strong, no matter as I'm saying, the, 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 the weather, the what, what, the root system is so secure. So much so you don't hear of a palm tree that has been uprooted because of a bad weather, because of a strong, a strong storm or wind that came there. No. That's why he's using this illustration. When he's saying now, the, the, like the palm tree, those that are planted in the house of God, they grow straight. He's just telling you that those that are planted in the house of God, they grow very well and they are very strong. I don't know if I'm making sense. Does my message so far make sense to you? Can I continue that way? So they grow tall, long tall, and straight. That tells you that the righteous that is planted in the house of God is called also to grow tall, high and high and high. In a straight way, in an upright way. Are you getting what I'm saying right here? There's another thing also about this palm tree. Is that this type of palm tree that the Bible makes reference to, it produces fruit throughout the whole year. Somebody said the whole year. So it produces fruit uh, throughout the whole year. So it, it, it talks about, this talks about uh, the abundance. It makes sure now to those of the time of the flammes, uh, when you hear about uh, this time uh, of a uh, palm tree, what comes in your mind, uh, you begin to understand uh, this is a tree that grows straight. This is a tree that is steadfast. This is a tree that is deeply rooted, and this is a tree that will make sure that there is always food in the house. Am I talking to somebody right there? That's an illustration that God has chosen. So now when they talk about the palm tree, what is the symbol of it? Palm tree, it symbolizes not this fruitfulness, uprightness, steadfastness, health and longevity. This is what it represents. This is what the symbol, what we're getting here. When you're talking about comparing the righteous man to a palm tree, you are saying that the righteous man are people that are fruitful, are people that are upright, they are steadfast, they are healthy, and they live long. Hallelujah, people of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the analogies I said to give us that the idea, the idea of growth, the idea of strength, the idea of stability, the idea of fruitfulness, the idea of becoming better and better. Now let's bring it a step, a step further. Am I talking to Are we still fine? Yes. Are we still okay? Yes. So we're trying to understand why the palm tree, I'm saying, why is he using the illustration of the palm tree? And I say the illustration or the analogy of the palm tree is to talk about the fruitfulness, is to talk about uprightness, uh, up uprightness, uh, is to talk about steadfastness, uh, is to talk about the health, uh, is to talk about longevity, is 
to talk about the stability. Now the psalmist does not just have the palm tree in his mind. Listen to what he says. He says, the righteous flourish like the palm tree and grows like a cedar. But it does not stop there. In verse 13, he adds a very important element right there. Verse 13, now he says, lest you misunderstand me. Lest you may think, yeah, I'm just talking about the natural principle, but I want to bring it, drive it now home. I don't want to just give you an illustration of you start looking at the palm tree naturally, but I want to talk to you about the specific one that I'm, I'm having and I think it might right now. Hallelujah. And he said, this is what I'm talking about. He said, the righteous are planted in the house of the Lord. So if you hear the idea of fruitfulness that I'm bringing into your mind, if you get the idea of productivity, of stability, of righteousness that I'm talking about, he said, it comes not from every tree that I'm talking about out there. It comes from those that are planted in the house of God. He wants to make us to understand this stability that we're dealing with here. He wants us to make understand that the good growth that we're talking about here is just a good growth. It's not the growth that just comes anyhow, but it's a growth that God granted to those that are planted in the house of God. Somebody say, planted in the house of God. Then to your neighbor say, planted in the house of God. This is very crucial because remember, as I told you from verse 7 to 9, he talks about uh, the downfall of uh, the wicked. In Psalm 92, verse 7 to 9, he compares the wicked one, the evil doer, like grasses. He says they wither, they dry up quickly. But on the contrary, the righteous, they are not like grass, but the righteous, they are like a palm tree. And not any other palm tree. They are palm tree that are planted in the house of God. And I'm, am I talking to somebody right there? There is that idea of the plantation. Of somebody being planted in the house of the Lord. That's where the accent of the passage is. It's true. Most of the time, whenever people read this passage, they only refer to it in terms of the flourishing. In terms, they say, he is in the house of God, he is flourishing. It looks like most of the action, accent is being put on the, the, the path of the flourishing path. But there is an important element that we should not ignore here, which makes uh, this palm tree to produce, uh, it is the fact that he is planted in the house of God. Mm. Hallelujah, people of God. The flourishing, right, it can be good. But the most important thing is, is where that palm tree is found. This particular one that we're talking about is found in the house of God. This is why what this first way this sermon is going to focus on to show us the importance of being planted in the house of God. I have just three said two points, two parts. This first sermon will go into two parts in the next 30, 45 minutes or so. I want us to understand. The first part I want us to understand the meaning of being planted in the house of God. And the second part I will show you some benefit of being planted in the house of God, right? I'm trying to make the message easy for everybody to catch, right? We have seen the illustration of the palm tree, what it represents, uprightness, steadfastness, stability, uh, production, or all this kind of blessing, right? And this, it has to be planted in the house of the Lord. Now, what does it mean in the first part of the message? Let us look at it. What does it mean to be planted in the house of the Lord? Palm tree, they are planted in the house of the Lord. What does that mean? First of all, what does it mean? I mean this is what I want you to understand and write it down. He said they are planted in the house of God. They are flourishing out there. Number one, to be planted... In the house of God tells us that it is God who planted the tree in his house. Uh huh. Are you getting what I'm saying right here? Being planted in the house of God gives some brings the first thing in our mind that it is God who plants tree or palm tree in his house. Notice there, you can see a bit of grammar there. 
believe your English is far better than mine. He's saying they are planted in the house of God. In terms of grammar there, we have a passive voice. Am I correct? Right? Some of you seem to be lost now. You say pastors are taking us back to primary school here. Well, it's a passive voice. What does a passive voice tell you? A passive voice tells you that uh, the subject of the of the, the sentence does not do the actions of the sentence, but he received the actions. When you are saying I'm being fed, that is passive. It means you are sitting and somebody is feeding you. It is different with the active voice that says, I am eating. When I'm saying I'm eating, I am doing the action of eating. But when I'm saying I am being fed, that means somebody else is doing the action of feeding me. That's just grammar, that's not Bible. Right? Now he says here, they are planted in the house of God. That means no tree planted itself in the house of God. Yes. I think what I'm saying there. No tree can plant itself in the house of God. God has to do the action of a planting. Choosing which tree he want to bring and plant in his house. Hallelujah. So to be planted in the house of God brings this thing in our mind. That is not our effort. Even if as Christian, beloved, let me tell you this naturally, nobody is born in the house of God. Naturally speaking, we are all born sinners in the house of our Father. But now, spiritually, when we are born, God takes us as a plant and he brings us and he plants us in his house. It's not our effort. That's why we need to submit to God. The Bible says clearly, John makes it clearly say, we were born not of the will of man, nor the will of the flesh, but we were born by, with, uh, of the will of uh, God. It's God that does uh, the planting. Now what does that mean in a local church? And what does that mean in you as a believer in the house? Listen to this. In a local church, this is what it means. The growth of the church does not depend on the pastor or on anybody. No matter the effort, no matter the means that the church can put out there in terms of evangelism and what, what, it will only take God to grow a house. Am I talking to somebody right there? It only takes God to send believers into local churches. It is God that does the work. Christ said, nobody can come to me unless he was sent by the Father. Now, Brother Marco, Brother Elisabeth, or the servant of God, and angel, this does not mean that we should stop the work of evangelism or follow up. No. It means we are to do it, but to leave the final decision to God. That's what the church needs to understand. Now, to you individually, to be planted in the house of God, in a local church, this is what it means for you. You don't have, beloved, to choose a church because you love a pastor that is dead, it's because you have a relative there, but you need to let God plant you in a local house where he wants you to be. Hallelujah. Because remember they say, it is those that are planted in the house that prosper. Now you don't plant yourself in any church because every church is not a good ground for you. Oh, and do I have a church that is a witness this morning? Hallelujah. We have believers that have become like monkeys. Jumping from one tree to the other, from one church to the other, they seek for place to plant themselves. Beloved, a child of God need to take his life very seriously. Somebody give me an amen right there. Yeah. You need to take your life very seriously. You need to know where you are planted. Because there's some ground where you're not supposed to be planted. There's some ground where you are just planted. What you will do, you will keep life, but you will not produce. Because the soil does not give you what you need. You don't plant an apple tree everywhere. It needs to be placed somewhere where all the conditions are gathered for it to grow. Am I talking to somebody right there? Yes. Beloved, let me tell you. There are flowers, plants, that grow inside the house. And there are those that make us to grow outside. Take the one of outside, you bring it inside, it starts rising. Take the one of inside, you plant it outside, 
it's a also dry. No matter how much you put on it, how much you pay, you bought, you bought it, it will dry. That's why the church sent of abundant rest. Everybody listening to me, right? You need to understand that. Don't plant yourself anywhere, but let God plant you. He needs a house and let God plant you in a local church that he has chosen for you because he knows best. He is the one who saved you. He is the one who knows your destiny. He knows the one. He is the one who knows what is the best place for you to grow. It's not about the size of the church. It's not about the quality of the pastor's suit. It's not about how many prophecies are given in the house. It's not about how many deliverances are conducted in the house of a particular service. It's all about the way God wants you to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, people of God. Are you still with me right there? It is God that does the planting. It's God that does the planting. That means the church need to let themselves be led by God. But what do we not see in our days? You sit on the home. That day you didn't want to come to service. You pretended that you were not feeling well. But what you do at home shows that there was nothing wrong with you. Everything was just perfect. And here you are, you start browsing. And you see this pastor. No. Next time I'm going to go to that church. Next time I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. You're just looking for places to be planted. Guess what? You become a spiritual prostitute. How many prostitutes of the spirit we have today in the house? Just lift up your hand in your heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Oh, yes. You are every pastor's believer. You are every pastor's believer. Pastors for headaches, for back pains. And you have become a specialist. It breaks my heart to hear people saying, he's speaking to a friend. No, I know of a pastor. He's good in that. He's good in that. He's good in that. And I heard once the pastor say, man of God, me, my specialty in ministry is, uh, is, uh, is what, what did he say again? Is, uh, is the curing of, uh, of witchcraft. So where did you get that from? Where did you get that from in the Bible? Because, you say, giving gifts. Do you know that spiritually giving gifts, they don't stay permanently with you? That's why, beloved, a character of a man of God is far higher, better than these gifts. Because the character reveals a true person, but the gift does not necessarily reveal the person. I don't know if I have an idea here what I'm saying right here. My character will tell you the, right, the kind of person I am, but my gift, it will only tell you about my ability, what I'm able to do, but not what I'm necessarily able to live. No wonder Christ said you shall know them not by their gift, but you shall know them by the fruit that they bear. Yeah. Hallelujah, people of God. Yeah. What does it mean again to be planted in the house of God? To be planted in the house of God, beloved, it talks also about a change. A change of position. Remember they say planted in the house. What we need to understand when the Bible tells you about planting in the being planted in the house of God, the other idea is uh, when you are planted in the house of God, there has to be a change of position. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Because previously you were taken somewhere and be, you were brought into the house of God, right? Now, where you were, things were a certain way. But when now you are brought, brought in, the, in the, the house of, of God, you are called now to change a position. There has to be a movement. Now that you are born in Christ, Christ has taken you somewhere and he has brought you in another, and now in his house. He wants you to change the position because now also you have changed the soul. Hallelujah. Being planted in the house of God talks also of a transformation. That takes place in the life of a Christian that was first in the world and now being brought into the house of God. If you are now planted in the house of the Lord, that means certain things also ought to change in you. You're taking now a new direction because you are now in a new place. Am I talking to somebody right here? Practically to you as a believer, 
You can be here today as a member of this house, the center of abundant grace. Perhaps because before coming, becoming a member of this house, you were a member in another church. Am I talking to somebody right here? Oh, hallelujah, people of God. Can you lift up your hand and say glory to God? You were a member somewhere else. But now when you are being repositioned in this new house, you should no longer live according to your former previous house. You should now live according to the position of the house where you are planted. Am I talking to somebody right here? This is what now blocks the growth of many. He is in the center of abundant grace. God has planted you here, but you live as a believer of the church next door. You will not profit, benefit from the grace that is flowing in this house. Hallelujah. Amen. You are planted in the center of abundant grace. You have to live according to a tree that is planted in this house. You may love Christ's embassy. It is okay. But the point is, if it is God who has planted you here, you need to adapt yourself, adjust yourself to the rules and the life of the saint of abundant grace. Don't try to leave Christ's embassy in the saint of abundant grace. You will become a mix of something and there will be confusion. Does somebody agree with what I'm saying right here? This is what is beloved is blocking also sometimes our churches from growing. You tell a person let you this way, and he tells you no, in Christ's embassy we're doing it this way. We are not in Christ's embassy. We respect what they are doing. They are doing it also based on the vision that the way that the, the, the pastor that was given to the pastor. Am I correct right there? No, in Christ's embassy, we're singing Nigerian song. It is fine. This is not a Nigerian song. This is not a South African song. Church, uh, this is not a Congolese church. This is the house of God. Hallelujah. We are a rainbow church. We call every nation. Am I talking to somebody right there? Oh, church of God, are you still with me right there? So when you are with us, God will lead you, beloved. Not under the anointing of Pastor Chris. You can listen to TV shows if you have a time. Somewhere there. But you need to know your direction, your reference, everything depends now on this house. That means you need to change your position. Hallelujah. That, do you agree? Do you, you, you agree with what I'm saying right here? You cannot be a son and daughter of this house, but you answer the principle of another house. You will be shocked, you will find out the church is in retreat here, but the person that called himself member of this house, he's not in retreat, he stays at home because they say Pastor Chris will be live at the six. It does not make sense. Spiritually, it doesn't make sense. It's only spiritual men who do not understand things who can act in that way. But if you understand that you are planted in the center of abundant grace, six is my prayer time. I will record that program. Maybe I'll watch it later for my edification. But right now, I need to listen to my spiritual pastor. That is Pastor Benjamin, and that's happened to be me. If Thunder and Grace was here, were here, I would have told them, guess who's here? They would say, you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody right there? Church, am I talking to you right there? We are 10 years, we need to change certain things. Tell your neighbor, things need to change around here. Change the neighbor, please help me. I want you to stand a bit. Go and tell two or three people. Today I'm talking to the house. Yes, I will know the obedient people by your reaction. Yes. You see? Those who are mine, they listen, they obey, they go. It's clear. It is clear. Some others they say, can't you see that I'm seated? Can't you see that I'm not feeling well? <laughs> Hallelujah. Can't you see that I'm getting a child? What is that now? What does that change? <laughs> if it was a prophecy, they tell you, stand up, run to the chop right, you will run. You say, Papa, how long, how fast must I run? 
And the other man loading the microphone, he said, run it enough to overshop right the run. And the other one shouted, God did my papa in what? <laughs> Somebody said we go deeper. Let me also start going deeper. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah, church of God. Am I talking to a house here? Hallelujah. You know, the thing needs to be changed. Things need to be changed. When you are planted in the house, it means a change of position. Change the position. Change the position. Change the position. The palm tree that we're talking about here, it needs to be changed the position. Now, being planted in the house of God, tell me, I begin to think otherwise, like uh, I should just stop in the first part. Let you digest so that we, we, stay, we stick to our time. And uh, next Sunday, we take the second part. Are we okay? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So allow me to elaborate more on this. And then next Sunday we take it. Uh, we take it. We drive the second part so that we don't uh, we don't read or uh, 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 rush it, and then we don't uh, also go extra time. Now, thirdly, what does being planted in the house of God means? Thirdly, to be planted in the house of God, it means to be seated, to be. So solidly established. It means to be seated, to be solidly established. This implies the idea that when a tree is planted in the house, the tree as well must get a hold or make use of the soil where it is planted. Am I talking to somebody right here? Hallelujah. Mm. The tree must start now relating. Because if you want to grow, you are planted in the soil, there has to be an interaction between the tree and the soil. Am I making sense right here? Because the vitamin and what what, the fertilizer, it is put in the soil. Now the tree that is planted in a particular soil need to begin to interact with the soil in order for it to be well seated. Now notice one thing here. The promise is saying here, I want to work out on this, please listen to me. He says this. They are planted. Somebody say planted. Somebody tell me please, planted. planted. He says this. They are planted in the house of the Lord. He does not say they are deposited in the house of the Lord. Does he say that? No. Doesn't say that. He does not say they are deposited in the house of God. No. He does not say they are standing in the house of God. But he's saying they are planted. That means their root goes into the soil in order for these people to become stable. That means they stand in one place. Is somebody getting what I'm saying right there? He said they are planted in the house of God and they flourish. Being planted means being rooted, being seated, being positioned in that very place where the Lord has put you. This is why, beloved, beloved believers that have become like freelancers, they don't grow. They jump from one church to the other. The Bible does not say it is from changing, running from one person to the other that they will flourish. But he's saying it is by being planted where God has blessed you that you will flourish. If I'm making sense right here. Beloved, blessing church of God and everybody listening to me does not depend on man of God. Blessing depends on the Lord himself and on the place where the Lord has put you. We understand, listen to this, a local church, to some extent, play a role in the blessing of a believer. Somebody say amen. amen. You see, beloved, listen to this. The purpose of preaching, the purpose of preaching the word of God, beloved, it is 
to help you listen to the word of God in a such a way that the word of God sinks, synchronizes with your system that the word of God get mixed up with your person just the same way the food you eat get mixed up with your system to give you the energy for you to live with the work of the preacher it is also to teach and to preach the word of God in a convicting, convincing way in a clear and a simple way so much so that the word of God may become part of you am I talking to somebody there? That the word of God may become part of you because once the word becomes part of you, therefore it begins to detect your thinking, it begins to detect your way of your talking, it begins to detect your actions and your decision because you have become mixed up with the word of God. That's why Paul will talk to the Corinthians that I will be talking to you until Christ will be formed in you. That means until the word of God takes place in you. Until you become really a product of the word of God. When a person reaches to that level, that's where you begin to talk about true Christianity. That's where you begin not to apply corruption, where you can say, if I live, it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives with me, because you become one with the word of God. I am I to give you some right here. Now in order to get to that, beloved, you need to be planted on a good ground. Somebody give me an amen right there. Amen. Now when the God Lord blesses you, beloved, church, understand, God does not expect his children to be people that run from one house to the other. To be people that submit under one pastor to the other. No. Being planted in the house, it means being positioned, solidly established in the house where the Lord has blessed you. Saint of abundant grace, listen to me. This is 10 years of anniversary. Hallelujah. This is 10 years of anniversary. It's about time, let me make it clear to you. It's about time that you may make up your mind where you belong. Hallelujah. Amen. Do I have a witness right here? Amen. I say and I repeat it clearly with due respect that it's about time that every single one of us may make up his mind. Hallelujah. Amen. Elijah stood up one day and he told the church, he told Israel, he said, until when will you falter between the two opinions? If God is God, then go after him. If you think that is Baal that is God, then go after your God. Go after Baal. I believe that the time has come in this house. Whereby everyone that is, that is in this house need to make up his mind. If the Lord has spoken to you to be here, decide and stay with us. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, are you, are you with me right here? Amen. Are you offended? No. It is about time. It's about time. It's about time. Trust me, it's about time. You cannot be preparing for a long journey with people whose heart are not with you. Because they can abandon you at any time. And the bad thing is, is to have a lot of people around you who have that are not that with you. Because you do not know at which time they can choose to abandon you. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't know what time they can choose to abandon you. But the Bible talks about a faithful friend. They stick to you even in time of difficulties. They stick to you even when things are ups and down. They stick to you, they remain with you. When you are crying, they cry with you. When there is nothing, they stay with you. I love it in the life of David. Beloved, when David was kicked out of uh, his, king, his kingdom by, uh, out of the throne by his son, Absalom, there was a group of general of people who were left with him. They remained faithful unto him. Although he did no longer have power, his son was ruling, but they understood that this man has still the kingship anointing upon him, so they stuck with him. And read your Bible carefully, you'll find out that when David was restored into his kingdom, these are people that became general in his kingdom. It was important for him to know who was truly with him and who was not with him. Hallelujah, people of God. Yeah. Being planted, it means to be solidly positioned. God does not expect his children, I say this. He does not expect his children 
to be moving from one place to the other, jumping from one house to the other, committing their life from one place to the other. By the way, beloved, as I said earlier on, those who run from one house to the other, one place to the other, this Sunday here, the next Sunday another place, another Sunday another place, beloved, they show you, they tell you one thing, that they are spiritually immature. They don't know what they are doing. As a result, they die of constipation. They eat sakalaka day. They eat KFC the another day when somewhere there. The next day they go to some other place. The food that was served that was yesterday food. And it was not warm. And the next thing you start having Armageddon in your stomach. <laughs> Fight in your stomach. You cannot no longer go to work. And you do not know where you eat what and where. Am I talking to somebody right there? Church of God. Oh, are, you, are, you, are you now angry? No. You see, read with me Ephesians chapter 14. I mean chapter 4 verse 14. What is Paul saying here? What is Paul saying? I think we'll start to run it up right here to give me some liberty so that uh, next week I can easily land it. I did not plan it that way. Ephesians chapter 4. Let's just take it from verse 12. We'll come down to 14. He said, or 11 rather, it's even better. He said, and he, that Christ, and Christ gave the apostles the prophet, the evangelist, the shepherd, and teachers to do what? To equip the saint for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. Until we attain to the unity of faith and of knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to make to the measure of the same stature of fullness of Christ. Okay, 14. Why all this that all these things? So that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. That's what God wants us to be. He said he doesn't want us to be children that are tossed away, tossed through and through by any wind, anything that blows you are gone. There is a prophet from Venda, you are gone. There is a this, this that is doing this, you are gone. The Bible says that's not what God is expecting you to be. God wants you to be a stable Christian. That is a position that is planted in one place with a stability. Because the flourishing, the blessing, depend on the planting. Somebody say, tell me, say, the, the, the blessings, blessings depend Amen. on the planting. Are we coming to that? The Bible said they are planted, therefore they flourish. Now today we are trying to understand the meaning of being planted. And deadly we're saying that you must be steadily planted. Position in one place. Church, let us grow. As I say, particularly for this house, this is 10 years. We move into our 11 years. Maybe you started just visiting us for a couple of, a couple of Sundays, a couple of times. But I want you to take time to pray unto the Lord. Is it the place you want me to be? Because remember, it's God that plants. I don't want you to be planted here if it's not a good ground for you. Am I talking to somebody right here? You need now to make up your mind. This is a place that I should call home. That you are no longer ashamed of your house. You are proud of your house. You are proud of what is happening in your church. We may not yet be a mega church, but we are happy with the progress that we are making with God. Because we know that one day or the other, we will get also there. What we call mega churches today did not just start as a mega church. They started somewhere. They walked faithfully with God until it got to a time whereby God pulled out also the Exodus 3 and looked at the Moses. He said, Now I've seen the suffering, I've heard your cry, and I've come down to deliver. Let me tell you, such time is coming for this house. Amen. 
Hallelujah, people of God. He's coming for this house. You know that they have been saying, I have been a child. Now I'm old man. I've never seen a righteous man abandoned. No, it's a generation begging for bread. What is he saying? That God is faithful and he reward faithfulness. God says not a man to forget that the Ephesians, I mean Hebrew chapter, chapter 6 verse 10. God says not a man. Hebrew 6 verse 10, he said, he's not a man to forget our work. For God is not unjust as to overlook your work and the love that you have shown for his name in serving the saint as you still do. He is not unjust. There will be a time where God will say, finally I have sinned. Hallelujah. Trust me, beloved, it's even as Pastor David was preaching yesterday. We do make sacrifices that uh, and none of you can imagine. You do not make sacrifices. Trust me, even me right now. If you put millions in my hand, the first thing is in my mind. It's not myself. It's not even my house. My house is the house of God. Trust me. What is standing on the top of my list right now is the house of God. It's to see things change. It's to see things change. It's to see, to bring the house to a point whereby somebody comes and you look at the house and say, glory to God. This is the temple of the Lord, of the living God. But I'm telling you, beloved, we're making sacrifice for us even to last these 10 years. It took the grace of God, but it took also man discipline. Are you getting what I'm saying right here? It took also, it took also men discipline. Trust me. It took us also some time, beloved, to stay away from everything everybody is doing right there. How many times were we not tempted? How many times was I not seated in the office and you see a lady walking in and not knowing who is dealing with? Hallelujah. Amen. There are people that have left this church who do not know the reason. Just because we told them face to face, I'm not the kind of man you're thinking. I may be weak, but I'm disciplined. I'm a disciplined person. Mm -hmm. you know, oh, church, is, are, you, are you still here? Right. Are you still here? The only time you sit with a lady in the office, he start laughing. I wish I could say it in Swahili if all of you could understand that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you how I say, lady, wrong address, wrong number. <laughs> Check mine is 07240 Have you done the right number? Hmm. Are you getting what I'm saying right here? Hmm. Say, like, let me sit straight. You are in the past office. How can I help you? If you came for this agenda, unfortunately, you are in the wrong place. Unfortunately, you are in the wrong place. You may as well leave. Walk out, never return. I say glory to God. There's a brother one that said, told him, brother, you need to live upright. He said, pastor, me. He came from Malawi. He said, he said he was a servant of God there. We were in retreat here. We spent time in retreat when he came. We spent time here in prayer. Then God blessed him, visited him. His life changed. He started picking up. The next thing when he picked up, the first person he thinks of to find a girlfriend here. I said, brother, you are crazy. Are you getting what I'm saying right here? Say you are crazy. You cannot do that. You left the family. Your wife, your kids are led to believe they are trusting God for you. That came this side to look for green pasture. To find that, that God may open the door for you. So much so that you may take care of them. Now here you are. You want to settle. You say, Pastor, me. <laughs> We're standing out there. You say, Pastor, until I find one, I'll never stop. I told him, brother, in that case, you don't belong to this house. He said, Pastor, if it will take me to leave the house because of the truth, I'd rather leave. I told him, you are more than welcome to leave because I do not associate with such people. I would rather die with a small church but in the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what you get in this house. Mm. I'd rather die with an empty pocket but with the fear of the Lord knowing that I'm going to heaven to meet my Messiah. Yeah. I'll not regret that. Are you get what I'm saying, my yeah. But I know that the Lord will grow us. Who does believe, who does believe in that? Are we together right here? Beloved, we're making sacrifice to push the house go forward and we'll get there. That's why we are saying it is about time that everybody who thinks is with us that they may arise and declare it openly. We need in this 10 years 
to have some Aaron, some Hugh that will be with us on the mountain and to have some Joshua who will accept to be on the field while we are on the mountain praying. Joshua is fighting because we know we are fighting for a common goal to push the work of God forward. Mm. Those that will come in the house, not for the sake of trying to find mistakes, but for the sake of trying to help. Those who realize that once you are planted in this house, you begin, you change your position. You have to relate with the house. It is no more your former house. It was okay when you were there, but now that God has planted you here, you need to live as somebody that is planted here. Hallelujah. You need to live as somebody that is planted here. That's what it means, beloved, to be planted in the house of God. He said that you may not be sons that are carried away. Church, let God help this house to change. May God help our house to change. They say they are planted in the house of God. They flourish. They are like palm trees. Those that accept to stay in one place where God has placed them. No matter the trouble, no matter the what, what, they flourish as the palm tree. Because the Lord grants them to flower. What does it mean to be planted? It means God is the one doing the planting. It means there has to be a change of position. It means you need to be solidly established in the place where God has put you. May my God richly bless you. Amen.